What's up everybody and welcome back to the Riding Dad YouTube channel or welcome if it's your first time either way, very glad to have you. Today we're talking about the Simpson Mod Bandit. Uh, obviously a motorcycle helmet, what else would it be? It's a helmet and this is a motorcycle channel. But before I get into my kind of long-term review of this, you guys saw the thumbnail, you know what it's about. We have to roll that intro because I know probably 99.3% of you guys love it. So let's get that over with, we'll come back. All right, so yeah, Mod Bandit. For those of you who are unfamiliar about what this is, uh, obviously it's a motorcycle helmet. The Mod Bandit and the Ghost Bandit are the two most popular Simpson helmets for the motorcycle community. The Ghost Bandit is a essentially a full face regular helmet, and the Mod Bandit is a modular helmet. For those of you who don't know what that means, modular means that the entire front chin guard does move up uh, and then you can have full access you can eat you can drink you can get a little bit of air whatever you want to do um, so this some of you guys who and this specific one has a drop down uh, sun visor but we'll talk about all that in a few minutes this specific helmet uh, for well backtrack for those of you who know i had an awry prior i used an awry corsair x uh, for about two, two and a half years, and I am starting now to look to a replacement, not because I didn't like the Arai, although I will be doing a very long-term review on that. Um, there's only one small thing that I didn't love about it, uh, but I just, I like branching out. I like trying new things, you know, I like doing stuff and, and giving other companies a chance. So, Simpson comes highly recommended from a bunch of people. Um, and uh, if you want to buy a Simpson, uh, whether or not my review sways you either for or against it, if you want to buy any kind of Simpson helmet, make sure you go check out uh, the boys at Tucker, yeah, you can see the whole thing, Tucker Speed, and use code RIDINDAD for 10% discount. Um, it'll help me out, it'll help them out, and it'll help you out by saving some money. So head over there, links are always in my description for the discount code, and of course, uh, this helmet will be in the, the link for the description as well. So this helmet uh where do i begin so i i ordered i think it was like a small or something on the size chart um i thought that would be good for me originally and it wasn't so i have a sample size of two uh to look as far as quality uh, quality control goes the first helmet i had although it did not fit me and i obviously exchanged it for this medium um it felt very high quality the um where the chin bar and everything closed and everything it closed super easy everything just fit nice and it was just a, a very well felt like a very well crafted helmet uh, however unfortunately this one uh, did not echo that so when i first got this one it has broken in a little bit better now that i've used it a bunch but when i did first get this um this doesn't you can kind of see now like just naturally closing it it doesn't want to naturally close it's almost like it feels like those little pins where the latches latch onto are just off centered by just a hair and it needs to like push it over which is fine it's not a big deal however when you are wearing it that extra force required to actually like really push down and lock into it to get it to adjust correctly and, and fit um, makes the helmet move a lot and it's not that this this helmet fits me correctly it's snug in all the right and the correct areas and everything but uh just just something to note um field of view which is especially important uh for us harley and cruiser riders more so than uh sport bike riders Field of view is very good. I will say I've had zero issues with field of view. Um, I have, this is an intermit, intermediate oval. Um, another, something to note guys, I don't, these reviews that I do, I'm not ever going to go crazy in depth with the specs and everything on this. If you want those specs, you can just go look at the website and, and decide. This is my opinions, that's what a review is for. So um, I don't know offhand, I can't remember. I know it's over three pounds, it's three pounds something. Um, it is, as far as modular goes, it's pretty light. I actually, I wanna say this is, feels just as light as my Arai did. Um, and that was when I had the comm system in there. It is a, is a fairly light feeling helmet, and I've had modular in the past, and as far as modular, the sample size that I have at least, this is one of the lightest weight mod modulars I believe you could probably get right now. Um, and it just, it does really feel, feel lightweight, which is nice. Something that's really important to me and probably important to you, depending on where you're at, uh, because I live in Florida, is ventilation. So you guys knew uh, my Arai, I spoke very highly of the ventilation for the Arai. Um, I loved the Arai's ventilation and ventilation is always something that's very important in a helmet for me. There you go. Um, and the Simpson is, I would say, I would say probably about average. 
Unfortunately, these top vents don't work great. You can feel it working just a tiny bit, at least in my opinion. Um, not anything that I would say, oh yeah, you could definitely feel it, it definitely helps. I definitely wish that that would be better. However, something to note, in most modular helmets, they are known for their poor top ventilation due to their drop-down sun visor. Now, their drop-down sun visor, uh, as an experiment for myself, I actually removed the entire piece, took it out, ran the helmet for a little bit without the internal sun visor, which is a, uh, exchangeable for, I believe, they have a yellow, but definitely clear, so you can do clear or, or uh, blacked out. Um, took that out, ran it, and a, a no improvement in the top ventilation, so it's definitely not only caused by that. However, just something to note, if, you, if ventilation is on your uh, huge priority list, typically modulars are not going to be known for insanely well ventilation, or insanely well ventilating, um, but... Uh, that's just kind of par for the course. Uh, something I will say that I did forget the, it doesn't really matter because I know they're all still rated correctly and everything, but the main primary visor is very flimsy compared to other visors, um, other other helmet brands that I've had in the past. Again, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna do its job. I don't, it's not like I don't have faith in this to protect you and, and just crack into a million pieces and you die, but um, just something to note, it's just a, a flimsier feeling face mask or face visor. Uh, you do have the ability to open and close the vents in these these three lines of vents. There's a internal uh, switch to open and close those. Uh, what I will say about those is you feel those dramatically. However, you only feel them when you turn your head. Um, and I had this on all sorts of speed, so it wasn't just that low speed cruiser or anything like that. Um, with those vents uh, closed, they did a good job of keeping the air out. With those vents open, you could feel no difference until you turn your head a little bit to the side. As soon as you turn your head to one side or the other, uh, felt a ton of air rush in from there. Something that I was highly impressed with this helmet about actually was uh, not only the comfort in general, um, the you know the feeling of whatever they whatever material it is they use for the chin curtain and the uh, cheek pads and the neck roll and all that stuff, but the chin curtain actually does a really solid job of keeping uh, a lot of wind noise out and a lot of wind in general, which is especially good if you live in a climate or area where it is somewhat cold in the morning and you want to keep that cold air off your face, but then by the early afternoon, if you're riding for a full day or a half day, it gets really hot and you want a lot of ventilation. You can remove this chin curtain if you want, it just pops out, um, but this does a really solid job of keeping the air out. Uh, something also important to note when you do lift that up, you are able to lock this in the up position. I'm not sure. Oh. Well, that didn't work as planned. <laughs> you are able to lock this, there you go, in the up position. Uh, I cannot tell you as far as like what it's rated for if it's you know gonna pass the safety inspection or whatever for a certain amount, but you can uh, do that. I will also say, uh, before I forget to mention it too, with the sun visor, like I mentioned, uh, issues with it. The As far as quality control, the first helmet I had, sun visor was perfectly fine um, from the get-go. This one, and I've read other people having this problem too for some reason, um, but sometimes it just doesn't retract fully. You, like if you do it somewhat slow, it doesn't retract all the way and you have to like really slam it up there, which is fine. It's not too big of a deal. Um, it's nothing that you would really notice. It's just, again, uh, a discrept discrepancy? Yeah. discrepancy in quality uh, against the first one I received and then this exchanged one. Um, I will also say that fitment, like I said, fitment was really good. I had no issues with um, any part of my nose or, or mouth or chin touching or getting dangerously like what i felt was dangerously slash uncomfortably close to the actual uh chin bar of the helmet it does come with a I believe it comes with a pin lock right i'm pretty sure it comes with a pin lock insert it is a pin lock ready and it comes with a clear shield it doesn't come with a blacked out shield but it does come with that uh internal visor for me the internal visor was essentially unusable and here is why Whenever I dropped that internal sun visor uh, down, it would hit the bridge of my nose. It would rest, when it was fully down, it would hit right there on my nose. Uh, when I tried to lift it up a little bit to where it was off my nose and actually comfortable to use and not <laughs> rubbing away at the, at the skin on my nose, uh, it would be just high enough to mess with my line of sight and it would create like almost in visionary, like it almost looks like, like a false line because it follows the shape and the contour of the chin bar and everything. And it was just an uncomfortable scenario uh, in general. That being said, I'm not sure, I can't remember if they market this helmet specifically as uh, glasses friendly. I use glasses, I used glasses in this all the time uh, during my review and everything. And I have, by the way, I have uh, probably a little over a thousand miles on this helmet. I've had this helmet for months now. I had it 
even before I took my Tail of the Dragon trip. So I've had some decent uh, decent time with this, but um, I've used sunglasses with zero issue. I don't I don't need thankfully uh, normal glasses to see, so I can't tell you about that. But any kind of sunglasses I've ever used with it uh, had no problem running those at all. Like I said, the internal vi or the internal linings are very comfortable to me. They don't feel quite as premium as uh, like the Arai pads, uh, but also this helmet is half the price of the Arai, so it is going to be a little bit different. And like I said, uh, it's almost unfortunate that I spoiled myself with the Arai because the Arai has a lot of stuff and features that uh, almost no other helmet on the market has. So I would say for the price point of this helmet, um, and I'll put it up right now because I know prices are always changing, but I'll put up the Tucker Speed price posted right now. Keep in mind you get 10% off if you use my code. But uh, for the price point, I think this is actually a pretty decent helmet. Um, it does come with cutouts for speakers. I'm not gonna show you all that, but it is kind of a plastic insert that you can stick um, like some, some helmets just have that EPS kind of foamy liner in there and it's hard to stick some stuff if you want to put Velcro or whatever, but these are, are kind of a thin plastic insert over that EPS. So you could put um, like any kind of sticky Velcro or even just a double-sided tape, depending on what kind of comms unit you have. Um, you could put that there, no problem. I ran my Cardo Pack Talk Bold in this and uh, wired up, no problem. Didn't have any issues putting it anywhere or, or you know, anything like that. Um, wind noise. If you are looking into this helmet at all and you've seen some reviews, uh, you've seen a lot of, you've probably seen a lot of people say that the wind noise and the noise in general on these Simpsons is, uh, is very loud, louder than typical. Now, something again to note about a modular helmet style is that a modular helmet is going to be noisier than a typical full face to begin with. You have a lot of cutouts, you have a break, which even though it is supposed to be sealed, it's still a break in the actual mold and the EPS liner and, and the outer shell and everything. So you have a lot of more, I guess, faulty areas where you could have noise come in and that is just a a typical issue with modular helmets. That being said, uh, this is a fairly loud helmet. So if you are somebody that is running any sort of aftermarket cam or a pretty good exhaust, um, earplugs is definitely gonna be something you're gonna wanna consider while running this. The bright side is some helmets, even though they have the speaker cutouts, depending on how their cheek pads are set up, uh, running ear pad or ear plugs with them. I don't know, I just had a brain fart. That's like, um, running ear plugs with them, is is not very conducive to being comfortable. So sometimes it pressures in with you and it creates uneven pressure points and everything. Um, this helmet, I've not had that issue. I've run three different sets of earplugs from the foam to the hard plastic to the custom molded uh, decibels or whatever they were. Um, I've had zero issue as far as fitting, uh, you know, earplugs and, and getting it on and off and everything like that. Something that is sort of a nitpicky thing, but worth it, I guess, to note on this review is uh, you guys know or should know for if you're familiar with me, I have zero problem with the double D ring. I actually kind of prefer uh, double D ring for these. It's just, it's an old school tried and true method. I've never been bothered by it. I can take an extra two seconds to put my helmet on. Um, when you do finally loop this up and everything, the final resting position for the little tab on the end of it is kind of up here in a flap uh, by itself. And it's kind of hard, it definitely with gloves it's kind of hard. Keep in mind with gloves, any kind of double D ring is gonna be hard, uh, especially if you have a thicker set of like leather gloves. Um, but that was just kind of a little annoying to really get the defined spot. You could do it. Um, I mean, I, I did it with gloves a few times. Uh, did it without gloves way more, but it still wasn't, uh, wasn't super easy to, to find that spot. As far as overall, uh, I guess the question that you probably would ask me is would I buy this helmet again? Um, and honestly, I would not buy this helmet again. I don't love modular helmets to begin with. And I know you're probably asking yourself, why the hell would you buy a modular helmet and now trash talk it? I'm not trash talking it, I'm being honest with it. Um, I actually kind of like this helmet for what it is. I took a gamble on this one. Uh, I wanted to try out Simpson because a ton of people are saying Simpson, 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 you know, it's it's a Dynabro thing, whatever. Um, they've got a cult following. I wanted to try one out and want to be a naysayer and stuff um, without even trying one. So I, I bought this one. I did not buy the Ghost Bandit, which is the regular full face um, because the vents up top are not closable. And when I buy a helmet, I don't want to have a two season helmet or a one season helmet and then change or whatever. Um, I've got, especially being in Florida, I've gotten caught in rain a ton of times. Uh, side note, I did not get caught in the rain with this helmet yet, so I cannot vouch as to its waterproofness. Um, so I can't tell you anything with that, but uh, I wanted a helmet that's gonna be waterproof. So to me, having vents up top that were closable, having vents down on the bottom that were closable, all that was something that was very important to me. Um, 
something that may or may not be important to you. That is why I did not go with the Ghost Bandit. Uh, so I went with the Mod Bandit to kind of try something different out, uh, try the you know the the modular style out again. Um, and, I, and like I said, this is a a, a very decent helmet. Uh, it is louder than most, which is not terrible. There's a ways around that. Uh, it cuts through wind pretty good. I never had issues going whatever speed I was going. I never had issues doing any kind of turns, uh, like, you know, checks for uh, for lane checks, whatever. I will say it grabs the wind a little bit more than a helmet style like the Arai or, you know, any other similar. I don't want to spoil any future reviews, but I have like four helmets sitting in there and I'm, I'm testing out right now. Um, so it grabs the wind a little bit, but it's not any violent kind of jerking, even going highway you know ish plus speeds um, it doesn't grab it like violently and jerk you or whatever it's just a little bit of a tug which you would expect because the shape of this is a very aggressive shape uh, which kind of brings me to the aesthetics of it this is a very cool aesthetic uh, helmet like I said the field of view is very good um, the visor changes are somewhat simple they do so something I know a lot of you guys probably care I, I care too um, modular it's not as important but uh, detents for the visor there are a couple detents and they're very positive, easy to find. The bottom detent doesn't really exist. So obviously you have fully locked and then when you open that, it just kind of unseals that gasket around the visor. And then the next actual detent you have is right around there, which is obviously too much uh, to run open unless you're having glasses on, in which case you can run it all the way up anyway. Um, the pin lock, I mean, it's pin lock. Pin lock's been around for decades and they work great uh, honestly if you're if the year is 2022 and newer uh, if you're buying a helmet that does not offer pin lock uh, visors and you're not and or you're not using pin lock uh, inserts I what are you doing <laughs> I don't care what kind of uh, fog proof fog proofing insert or, or whatever you have uh, nothing is gonna work as good as a pin lock pin lock uses science it doesn't wear away uh, pin locks are incredibly incredibly uh, useful they're they're just there's nothing better than pin locks um visor changes uh, i did take it off a few times it's super easy you grab this little pin right here and you just rotate this counterclockwise um it's super easy to get back on as well do it without it's kind of hard when you're doing it halfway but you basically just put the visor back where it was put this back where it was and you don't have to depress that it just clicks in um, so visor changes are super easy uh, the modularity about it you just grab it right there super easy when you do click it up it locks the visor back in so you could do that um, like i said overall really good if the ventilation was better um, i would probably keep it uh, if the ventilation was a little bit better up top, I would keep it. The Like I said, the interior was pretty comfortable, had no issues with the interior. Um, we talked about noise, everything like that, road noise. I will say um, this, I would say wind noise is about on par for kind of a standard modular, if not a little bit more wind noise, but where this, I feel, lets in more noise is like actual noise, like your bike running noise, uh, music noise, car noise, and stuff like that. It lets out or lets in a lot more noise than typical. Um, the wind noise is kind of, I believe, on par, um, but I will say that when these vents are open and you turn your head to get a little bit of extra airflow in, obviously those are uh, a lot more um, wind noise. And obviously with ventilation comes more wind noise, so. Uh, it does flow a massive amount of air in the face area when you have the vents appropriated and you, and you turn your head or you have the visor in that kind of somewhat uh, up clicked position. But it's just, like I said, the top of my head, something that just locks in all the heat and it just, it kills me in uh, Southwest Florida. It just really sucks. And it's just something I can't live with, unfortunately. So all of that being said, and like I said, I already touched on the fact that I would not buy this again. If I lived in another part of the States, or I guess out of the state, but, or out of the States, if I lived somewhere that it wasn't super hot, like if I lived in maybe North-ish Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina area, um, could I see myself potentially uh, buying this and using this? Yeah, maybe, but uh, honestly for the price, I feel like there are some other pretty solid options out there. As far as modular helmets go, if you are in the market for only modular, I do feel like this is, uh, a somewhat solid option for you to pick. I have not tried a ton of mod modulars out, but I have tried, uh, you know, I have I have experience with modulars in the past, and I would say uh, currently with what is offered, this is a pretty decent modular uh, style, but I do not think it has more enough perks to stray you away from getting a full face. Um, modulars are also inherently not as safe as full faces. I know this is DOT, obviously, uh, it is ECE. It's ECE 22.05 certified in 2018 for uh, DOT. So um, 
it's it's a, like I said, it's a pretty decent helmet. They have a bunch of different colorways. Um, it, like I said, it worked fine with my comm system. It obviously works fine with uh, Lexan. And I mean, if it works with Cardo, it's gonna work with pretty much everything. Um, that is my uh, final thoughts with this Simpson. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if you have a Simpson, if you like it or not. Uh, hopefully I wasn't too hard on it. Like I said, I actually do like the helmet. Um, I will say my initial, I forgot to do like an initial first impression with this helmet, but uh, if I did that for YouTube, it would have not been uh, super nice because especially coming with those quality control issues I already spoke about in the beginning of the video, it was just kind of disheartening to see this one not work as good as my first one and this one be the one that I needed for fitment. Uh, but all of that said, like I said, um, it's just, it's a it's pretty good all around helmet, honestly decent, doesn't fit what I need in a helmet, might fit what you need in a helmet. So if you're gonna get one, make sure you go to Tucker Speed, use my discount code uh, and check them out. And if you're seeing this within uh, about a month or two, uh, my personal giveaway will be done by the time this is uploaded, but Tucker Speed is still giving away a free bike. And I think there's like a thousand dollars cash with it too or whatever, I can't remember the uh, uh, all the, uh, the fine print on it, but uh, at the very least, they're giving away a bike. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty good deal if you just spend money in their shop. So check them out, use the code, get yourself a Simpson or, or not, get yourself something else. Let me know what you guys think about the Simpson review. Let me know what you guys have. Let me know what helmets you guys recommend as I am currently in the market for my new forever helmet. Um, don't forget to check out all the links in the description. Chat with me on Instagram. Make sure you follow me. Uh, it's the easiest way to, you know, talk to me about anything, ask me questions, or, or you know, even just talk, talk with you guys all the time on Instagram. I do have a TikTok, but I barely use it, so I guess follow me on TikTok. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel, of course, and make sure you hit the thumbs up button on this video, please. I really do appreciate it, and it helps out the channel a ton and allows me to do more stuff like this for you guys and test out more products. I appreciate every one of you guys for watching. Thank you very much, and until the next time, guys, ride safe, have fun, Dad out.